I tested some of the most popular SSDs in the market right now, so you don't have to. This video is an update to a video that I did about a year ago and quite a lot has changed in that time. So today we're gonna dive into this world of the external SSDs to help you choose the right one for your needs and your budget. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. There are so many SSD options out there. So sit tight, we're gonna go through quite a few of them here. And to make sure I did a fair comparison here, I tested all of these SSDs on various devices, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, using different OS formats as well, APFS and XFAT. For transparency, I uploaded all of the raw data, the test, the spreadsheets, the, the videos of the test as well, all in a Google Drive and I'll put a link for you in the description. A very important aspect of SSD performance is heat management. So I monitor the temperature throughout so you can see that as well. We use the Blackmagic Design Speed Test app for a five gig test over 10 transfer cycles. In addition to that, for a more realistic test, I use a 125 gig folder transfer with mixed files, uh, lots of documents, uh, video and photos, which help me test sustained performance. And a quick note for iPhone users, you gotta be careful with how you choose your SSDs as well. There are some slower drives that I will be showing you here today that do struggle with ProRes recording, and we'll see that later. I've considered lots of factors in this test, but the three main factors for me throughout this video were performance, convenience and price. And a final little disclaimer here before we start, none of these brands send me the SSD drives by the way. And before we go into each of the drives themselves, here's a useful page that I put together for you so you can see the test that I run. Let's bring that here. And don't worry, I will be sharing this throughout the video as we test each drive, but feel free to post the video here and screenshot it. I've got to start with this one, which is more of a word of caution. SanDisk Extreme and Extreme Portable models were great last year, but recent reports indicate that there are some serious issues with data loss with these guys. I can't recommend them right now until these issues are resolved. I still tested the Extreme Portable for reference, but proceed with caution if you're gonna use these ones because I contacted Western Digital myself personally, and I said, hey, I'm about to make this video. It was a very popular video last year. I'd like to know what you're doing about these issues. Would you like to share your side of the story? and they didn't get back to me, which is a shame because I wanted to give them an opportunity to explain what is going on and what they're doing for future versions, but I personally never had a problem with SunDisk drives, but I can't ignore the facts. Or your comments as well in my community. In this test, I only tested the SunDisk Extreme and the WD Black drives as well from the same company. As you can see here on the raw data, the SunDisk Extreme didn't score very well against the others. And if I eventually hear back from Western Digital, I'll make sure to update it in the pinned comment or in the description as well. But for now, all I'm getting is crickets. The WD Black is kind of geared towards gamers and I have a confession to make. I didn't buy this for gaming. I bought this because they look really cool, you know, with the lights and everything. Silly, I know, right? But I wanted to test them as well. So there was an element of I wanted to buy it for this video. And I do use it for certain things simply because they are really nice and fast when I need them to be but I don't put any live projects on them because of the whole data loss issues. But here's the thing, even if the whole SunDisk Western Digital data loss issue wasn't there, there is a problem with this drive, which is why I think it was important to record the temperature whilst doing these tests. When these get hot, say 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 40 degrees Celsius, they get really, really slow. And I mean, slower than the cheapest drives that you can buy right now. They were super fast on read speeds, way faster than anything in this form factor, reaching about 1.3 gigabytes per second. It makes it great for storing uh, gaming content, but for write speeds, as soon as it gets hot, you're in trouble. You know, this thing slows down to like 500 megs per second, which for something at this price, I think is just too slow. So it has a specific purpose for gaming, but if you're gonna use it for like production data, video editing or something like that, I'd stay away from it. So just be aware of that. And this brings me to an important point actually about this advertised fees that you see before you buy something, right? Every single brand will share these crazy numbers on that box, on the website, but in my tests, I was never able to achieve it. So they must be using some specialized machines to test this. And they do say, if you squint really hard and read the small print, that they are up to that speed but just take it with a pinch of salt because as you can see here today, we very rarely reach the high end of those advertised speeds. Coming up, I've got some nuclear options here for you, which are gonna be the fastest performance across all of them. But before we talk about these bad boys, here's one of my favorite brands right now, Crucial Memory. The Crucial X8 here was a revelation for me last year. I called this the best value for money option in my previous video, and they still deliver today. In my tests, it maintained a very good read speed of 800 megs per second on large files, but it really slowed down a little bit when transferring lots of small documents. Fairly decent on write speeds too, maintaining about 720 megs per second throughout a large file transfer. One thing to note on this one is the temperature. This design seems to be perfect from a heat management perspective. Even when I'm holding it right now, I can tell you that you know, it's got that aluminum feel to it. 
very nice and cold to the touch. Now moving up to the X9 Pro, this for me is now the best balance between performance, convenience and price. These do get a little bit warmer than the previous one, but boy, they can cope with it. Super fast, reaching about 900 megs per second on read and 700 megs per second on the right. These are so convenient. I mean, look at how small they are, right? I'm actually in the process of migrating a lot of my drives into these ones. I want to use the X9 Pro for data that I use that, you know, up to one year old, which brings me to the X10 Pro. This is now my production drive. The way I managed to save on buying local storage, like on my MacBook, was to keep only maybe the last two or three live projects on my local SSD. Then moving everything else, like the last 10 projects, into the X10 Pro. When working with editing several layers of 4K video in Final Cut Pro or large raw images in Lightroom, for example, and applying presets to all of them at once, you know, doing some really crazy, like lots of operations at the same time, there is no performance difference working off of the X10 Pro in comparison to my M1 Max MacBook Pro internal SSD. Insane performance, really. And the fact that they fit so neatly in any pocket, from a convenience perspective, these two are incredible. Just a quick reminder, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. 4,300 people subscribed to my video last time I did this. So I'm hoping that it was because I saved them some money or I helped them with this test, right? And there's so much more to come. The channel is nearly at 100K right now, and it would be awesome to have you here to celebrate that milestone for me. I haven't quite got the, the fireworks and the champagne yet, but I'm definitely gonna do something cool when we get there. Going back to the video, I wasn't really happy with just testing the standard test with the X10 Pro. So I decided for this one, which is a really fast one, that it needed to be pushed a little bit harder than the others for the testings. So I copied 1.9 terabytes, which is almost the entire capacity of this, from the Crucial X10 Pro to my Acasis enclosure. So the enclosure was doing a lot of the writing, right? And the X10 Pro, the reading. Halfway through the transfer, I thought, let's try and run a benchmark test at the same time and see how this performs. And as you can see here, it performed incredibly well. So in that dual testing, right, the X10 Pro then was doing sequential reading right through the benchmark tool and a lot of read operations at the same time for the data transfer. I did notice that the copy did slow down during the benchmark test and the temperature did raise to 95 Fahrenheit or 34.7 Celsius. When I stopped the benchmark test, the transfer speed returned to normal. And after about 10 minutes, I did notice the temperature dropped as well to 93.6 Fahrenheit or 34.2 Celsius. This was a very unlikely scenario. You're not gonna be doing this a lot. I mean, in the last three years, I've only needed to do that, that large amount of transfer, maybe once or twice. But it does show you that if you want something that can transfer two terabytes of data without dropping connection or overheating, the Crucial X10 Pro can handle it. And doing the transfer the other way around was pretty impressive too. I was able to reach over 2.5 gigs per second on the read. The write speed was obviously a lot slower here because by the time I was doing this, you had been busy for about 20 minutes of that two terabyte transfer. Insane, really. By the way, this video is about external SSDs, but it's worth mentioning that I'm using the T705 from Crucial, if you're interested. I'm not gonna talk too much about this in this video, but if you are after the best internal SSD for a PC right now, especially if you're a gamer, then I'd say definitely have a look at this T705 and NVMe option as well from Crucial. It does deserve its own video, so make sure you subscribe for that. Which brings me to the nuclear options that I mentioned earlier. This is now my favorite, and much like the X10 Pro, I use it every every single week for editing these videos. Super reliable. It actually has a built-in fan, this one here. There's a button here that you can press and it turns the fan on to keep it nice and cool, which I've never seen before on any of these enclosures. And it does help. It's fairly quiet too. It's not very noisy at all, but I only ever really need to turn it on when I'm exporting my final edit. When I'm exporting a video is when I need the most performance and that's when I need it to be nice and cool. And what is cool about the Acasis enclosures is that you don't need any tools to work on them. Check this out. You can easily access the drives by hand. So you could have multiple of these M.2 NVMe drives and swap them around as you need them. For consistency and because they've been solid for over two years now, I use the Sabrin Rocket Drives. Honestly, I basically have run two channels, my another business outside of YouTube, nearly 400 videos on these drives. So I am accumulating quite a lot of them. I have a NAS drive here as well, but the thing is I edit from home as well sometimes. So I need to travel and these things are so portable. Now just chuck them in my bag. They're really good. I just recycle them every now and then, deleting old videos and keeping the most recent ones stored on these drives. Perhaps not as convenient as the X10 Pro, but way faster. Acasis do have a few different options as well, like some of the smaller ones. And what I love about Acasis is that they do these little hubs as well. Not only do they give you fast access to the external storage, but also more ports for your laptop or your computer. This is their older model, but it has ethernet, HDMI, USB-C, 
a couple of Taipei's as well for good measure, and it can even power your laptop through power delivery. I've been using these ones for about two years now and they've been rock solid. Definitely check out their hubs as well. They have some really cool options. And from a performance perspective, as you can see here, they're just on another level. I think it definitely helps to have something reliable as well, like the Sabrent M.2 drives in here. But if you're looking for something that's gonna cope with a lot, I mean, high intensity workloads, I can't recommend these enough, amazing. Moving on to a more budget-friendly option, another couple of safe bets are the Samsung T5 and the T7 Shield. There's another word of caution here with these options from a longevity perspective. These are not by any means nuclear options, right? But definitely reliable for a short-term solution. Let me explain. For instance, I wouldn't use this to, to have my only copy of something quite important like my wedding photos or, you know, that one trip that you did and, you know, if, if you're gonna use something like this, maybe have a couple of copies. And these are definitely not fast enough to be used for large data transfers, or like I mentioned earlier, for iPhone ProRes recording. Definitely not good enough for it. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube recommend this for the iPhone. And like I said, in my experience, they will work for like short clips, maybe three to five minutes, but say for 10, 15 minute videos, your iPhone won't notice, it will carry on recording. But when you go home and you start watching the video, you're gonna, you're gonna panic because it's gonna ruin your day. I left a few examples for you to see it for yourself, you know, because I've been there and I used it for like a whole day shooting on the T7 Shield attached to my phone. Very convenient, very easy to attach to the back of the iPhone. You know, you can, there's all sorts of different solutions for that to rig it all up, but it just didn't work out. So for, for that, I would say use the X9 Pro or the X10 Pro. But if you're not interested in ProRes recording, all you want is some external storage to back up your files, then these are really, really convenient. But after a while, I did start to see some issues with the T7 Shield, like the ProRes issue I just mentioned. And the other problem was trying to format it for this video so I could run some tests. You know, it completely froze my machine several times on my MacBook Pro and it just wouldn't format it. Eventually it did, but as you can see here, not the greatest experience. And even after it was formatted as XFAT, it just wouldn't mount on my Windows PC. The bottom line on this one is it was okay for about a year and I did use this a lot during that time. But after two years, it clearly has some issues now. Don't get me wrong though, these are still very good and quite popular in this sub $200 price range. The T7 Shield is much more durable as well and supports up to three meters drop protection as well as an IP65 rating, giving you a little bit of peace of mind if you splash some water in it or that, you know, get some dust into it. There's some resistance in here. For me, Crucial at the moment offers the best balance you know, between price, performance, and convenience in 2024. This combination of Acasis and the Sabrent option for me is one of the best of the bunch as well for raw performance and for budget-friendly options, the Samsung are still suitable for basic needs and I haven't heard anything about data loss with them. So this video should give you a decent foundation for you to go out there and choose the best external SSD for your work. If you have used any SSDs or NVMe drives that you'd like me to test, please do, do comment and let me know which ones you're using that, that you like and I'll make sure to include it in the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. I'm doing much for my OCD. This is fine. I used to go in for my work. There are many options out there, so sit tight and you know we're gonna go through quite a